Hi guys, my name is Stephanie Biting and I teach art at Hardin Valley Middle School. Today I'm here with you to talk about how to draw a portrait. A portrait is typically an image of someone's head and shoulders. But in order to know how to draw a portrait accurately, we have to learn how to draw all the little parts of the face and how to put them together using proportion. In order to understand how to use each part of the face, we need to do something called observation. My favorite thing to do is observe from life. So I like to observe a model, someone who might be sitting around your house, hanging out with you today. Um, you could even use a mirror today to observe your face. You could grab a device, whether it is a tablet or a phone, and snap a picture of your face or someone else's face, or even use an older photograph, whether it's one on your device or laying around the house. Next thing you're going to need is something to draw with. It really doesn't matter what you use to draw. I'm going to just use a pencil and an eraser today. Um, if you have a Sharpie or um, a regular old marker or any sort of colored pencil, any of that will do. If you're going to use something like a marker that's a Sharpie, you definitely want to put something underneath it so it doesn't mess up your parents' coffee table. Next thing is something to draw on. You can use a sketchbook, you could use just computer paper, or you could just use some colored construction paper. Any of that will do, even line notebook paper. So why don't you go get all your stuff and we'll get started. Key to drawing anything when you're observing is drawing what shape you see. The tear duct is on the same side as the nose, so it's always on the inside of the face. The outside of the face over here does not have the tear duct, so the tear duct will be in here closest to the nose. So just remember that, um, but if you're observing, you'll be able to know because you will see it right here. But I'm going to start on the outside of that, sketch this eye up. And just know that if yours doesn't look exactly like the photo, that is okay. You are learning how to draw and you're learning how to recreate the shapes that you're seeing. And that is all part of the process. And use that eraser to adjust it. If you see like, oh, that's off a little bit, just erase it. Or if you don't have an eraser, just draw it again in another spot on your page. That's all right. That's why people practice. That's why we do things over and over. Picasso drew over and over and over. Van Gogh painted his sunflower 16 times. Okay, so let's look at this under eyelid. I'm gonna go up. It goes up, down, and up. So I'm getting all these shapes carefully laid out. I'm gonna look at the whites of the eyes outside the iris and say, See how that fits in here between the colored part, the iris, the white of my eye, and my tear duct. So just trying to create that shape. It's more like a quadrilateral in here that I'm creating. Maybe a little bit more organic of a shape than that, but that's all right. So I'm understanding it's creating that shape with those lines there. Your iris and your pupil are always going to be completely round. But the problem when we talk about that is that you don't see the top part or the bottom part of that iris in the, because it's covered by the eyelids, so you don't see it here or here. But if you start drawing these shapes here and understanding, oh, that is as round as I can get it, that will help you placing that in there and making it look more realistic. So don't fret over that, but know that you're typically not going to see the white below or above unless you see like a scared or excited expression happening in someone's face. All right, so we've got that started. Let's talk about the crease before we talk about the pupil. The crease behind the eye. Notice how it's really close to the tear duct here really close space wise and then it gets a little bit wider away from the eye as it goes up so don't be afraid to mimic that in your work as well okay all right so now we need to talk about the pupil the pupil is the black part of your eye it is always perfectly round as is your iris, 
If you ever needed to trace something in art, you could trace a little tiny circle to make that perfect. I see that her pupil is closer to the top lid, so I'm going to make that happen. I'm going to put it a little bit higher up in her eye. Maybe she's looking a little upward. And then there's one really important thing we can't forget about, and that is this reflection. So there's a couple different ways I've seen people do reflections. What we're going to do um, to make it easiest is we are going to kind of draw it in one spot and to make it the most readable in your work. And you want it to kind of go in and out of both the iris and the pupil. So you can just give yourself another circle there um, and we'll fill in around that as we go. Um, let's also talk about the eyebrow. Her eyebrows are very blonde, so they're very hard to see, but typically the eyebrow starts about here and ends about here. So you can kind of sketch those lines there and follow along. Eyebrows are short little hairs. They kind of go up at the front of the brow and as they start to go across, they might lean back. Don't be afraid to observe your image closely to kind of see like, how thick is my person's eyebrows? How far do they go across the eye? Some might go in a little further, some might go out a little further. That's what makes us unique and gives us all a little bit of a different look. And that's why observation is important because then you can really start to make your image look like the person you're drawing. So then I can just erase these lines out. Got her general eyebrow sketched in there. Okay, so now let's talk about value. A value scale is typically five, the best are typically five to seven values. So I'm gonna use a heavier pencil pressure to give myself a dark value. Then I'm gonna lighten up my pressure, give myself a lighter value. Maybe go over it one more time because I want to gradually get lighter with my values as I'm making my scale. One, two, three, four. And you could say my next one would be my five, which I'll draw a block around it to make it my white. Okay, so I've got my darkest dark all the way to my lightest light. So my black essentially to my white, and in here is my midtones, which creates a little gray scale. Okay, so let's talk about these values in the eye now. I'm going to start with the tear duct here. That's kind of maybe in between, we'll kind of call this five, four, three, two, and one, maybe about like three to four. So I'll make a three first, and then if I need to darken it up, I can always go back. I also want to think about these white parts of the eye. They are not as white as the reflection. They have a little bit of value in them, and that is a good thing to go in and add some of that. So maybe add a little bit of two in there, kind of giving yourself a little bit, and you can even take your finger and smudge it if you're using a pencil. Um, that creates depth in your eye. Your eye is round. It sits back, and it gives it a little bit more form. Same with the other side. You can see that this is got a little value in here. I'm going to just kind of swirl my pencil real softly. It's called scumling. And give myself a little bit of value blending it with my finger. Okay, so we also have some value kind of going back behind the eye with this crease. I'm just going to smudge a little bit in here with my pencil. Kind of smudge what I see. It'll start to give your whole face depth once you start really studying those values. Another thing we need to talk about is this bottom lash line. I forgot to put those in. We'll do that last, but there are two lines below your eye, and that is where your eye closes, and you have lash lines that come out from this bottom line here. We'll add those in at the finishing touches. Now let's talk about the pupil. Our pupil, would it be, what do you think? What color on here? Probably a five, right? So we're gonna fill in that pupil now, one thing to avoid having pencil lines when you're doing something like this, swirl your pencil. Use that scumling that I talked about before and give yourself a little extra pressure 
to fill in and create that nice dark tone. Also, if you need to turn it to make your pupil as round as possible, turn your page. That's okay. You do what works for your wrist and it doesn't matter at the end, it's done, right? Because you were able to make it happen. So if you need to turn your page to create that shape, go for it. Okay, so a little off still. Touch that there. All right, so now let's talk about adding in your, see it's a little more off here. I'm gonna make it a little bit larger on this side. Okay, all right. So now let's talk about adding in the values around the eye in the iris. So this color part where it has the little muscles that open and close your eye um, when it's too light or too dark. So, all right. So when you add these little lines in, they're kind of like little fibers that go like this out in the eye. So if you look closely, you can see that they're fibers. And I always like to say they kind of radiate out like a sun. You can see she has a lighter area through here, so I'm going to use kind of a hatching technique where I'm gonna draw these little lines going out, and I'm gonna do less lines where I want it to be a little lighter, and more lines where I want it to be a little darker. You can always go back and erase some to lighten up the value. But I'm trying to look at where it goes lighter through here. And again, I'm turning my page if needed to create those little rays coming out of the eye. Okay, so I've got my eye started in here with this iris color. Go back in, add a little bit more value in a couple spots. I don't wanna to get too dark in certain areas, but I see that it's got this dark rim around it. So I'm gonna add a little bit more here giving it more depth. All right. Okay, so now that we've got that going, I'm kind of looking at both. I think I wanna take a little bit more out of here to kind of match my photo a little more. Okay, and sometimes you can see that erasers aren't necessarily like mistake tools. They're tools to alter your value. So they can be used in a lot of ways. All right, so we've got this going here. I'm even gonna take my finger and kind of blend it a little. Kind of smoothing it out some. All right, so let's talk about some more value up here in this crease. I think it needs a little more. I've got some on my finger so I can kind of smudge that in. This side has a little bit, it's pretty bright right there in the middle. And then we've got a little bit more over here. And sometimes you can even take, if you have a little value, your value skill, you can smudge your finger on it and get a little bit and smudge it up there in the eye. Here, some depth around that eyeball. Okay. All right, last but not least, let's talk about eyelashes. Now there's always the debate. I have boys in class that say, Miss Biting, I don't wanna draw big long eyelashes. Do I have to draw eyelashes? You have eyelashes. Now girls wanna give themselves these big crazy eyelashes, um, but let's talk about the trick to eyelashes. You can see she doesn't have a ton of big dark eyelashes going up in front of her eye like she has mascara on or anything like that. She has these little natural eyelashes that go out to the right that we can see. Um, to me, the trick to an eyelash is the quick flick of the hand, like push down and pull it up and flick. And they typically go like two out of one spot together like that. So also, you, if you're on the right side of the eye, you're going to draw it, the eyelashes typically going to the right side and the left side of the eye, you'll go to the left. So just kind of observe in the mirror a little bit and kind of notice what happens with your eyelashes because they're kind of coming straight out at you. 
so it's a little hard to understand which way to draw them. So I'm giving her a few here and there. You want to have them kind of some different lengths, some a little longer, kind of going different ways. You want it to come right out from that upper lid. So if you need to edit and kind of push a little bit more value there, that is okay too. Um, so we've got these going one way. Now we're in the middle, so I'm going to start going the other way. Even though I can't see them in the photograph, I know she has some eyelashes there, so I'm going to draw them in. Um, nice flick of the wrist there to get some natural eyelashes going on. Draw one going up in the middle if you need to. Um, bottom lashes. So remember, we had this double line down here for your bottom lid. I'm going to go back in and touch it up with a little more value because I've been smudging down there a bit and erasing some. So I've got this bottom lid going here with my two lines. And my eyelashes are going to come out from this bottom line. So what I'll do is I will take and I'll do a little and I can't see hers in my photograph, um, but you can see there's something happening here. So I'm just going to do a few. I know she has some there. Again, I'm on this side. Try to make them come out of the same spot if I can. They kind of all go different, like different angles, different directions a little bit. All right. I can even add a couple in here if I want and imply that there's something happening over there. But you just want to be real soft with them. You don't want to go too crazy. All right. Let's talk about how to draw the nose. We're going to start with the outer nostrils first. I like to think about them as like parentheses kind of shapes. And then we'll move to the inner nostrils. And I like to think of them as kind of upside down hooks or J's and they kind of fit like this curves under and they kind of fit right inside of it, the parentheses. So remember you're observing what you see to help you understand that shape and how they fit together. So really look at it and study what direction does your line go? How does it curve? Does it actually connect in the middle or not? You can even just imply it a little bit there and not connect at all. We're going to use value to build up this ball and the bridge of your nose. We're not going to draw lines up here. Um, so let's talk about value. Remember we have our little value scale, our five, our four, less pressure, three, even less pressure. You might have to go back and darken your four a little bit more to make it fluid. Gradual change, two, and then your one. All right, five, four, three, two, one. So our midtones, our highlights, and our shadows. All right, let's start filling in these shadows. In the nostrils, here's your five, but I'm gonna start with the four. I don't like to go as dark as possible when I start something. I just like to gradually build it up. I'm gonna put in maybe a four here as well. And then I'm going to start building up around the, the ball of the nose, which is down here at the bottom. So I see that there's a little bit of value down here. I'm going to just kind of swirl my pencil to create those values building up around here. This might be like a three. Build it up the bridge with a three. I'm swirling my pencil really lightly to build out to a four. I'm going all through here and looking at these values right now. Right now let's go to the outside. And that's going to make that nostril start to pop there a little bit. I've got a little bit of value down here underneath as well. While I'm out here, I'll just work with that. Okay, so I'm going to softly have this go up and down. I can take my finger and start smudging it and blending, creating that shape. I'm going to blend a little bit over that nostril because it is a little darker on the outside as well. Um, and that will just kind of fill that value in for me. So I 
It's nudging it with my finger. Okay, so I've got one side built up. Now, how do we do this other side? Well, we use lighter values. We use like our threes and our twos and our ones over here and start kind of carefully laying them in. So I have a little bit of value here. And I think and it goes up this way and kind of behind. So it's creating that ball, that pop of that ball right there where we have that white highlight. And then we have, let's see, a little bit out here that's happening. It's up this way, kind of closer to the eye. But this is what builds that shape. Your whole face has dimension and shape and form happening. And so adding in these other values outside will start to create that 3D feel in your face those little values even have a little bit going on outside here. I'm going to need to lighten up that nostril a little bit there on the outside. Push this a little more over here. But you can see I am kind of mixing up the direction of my lines, whether I'm swirling them or using the side of my pencil to go back and forth. I'm trying really hard to create value and not line. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna lighten this up some because we don't see a hard line there. To create that outer nostril. All right, I think we've got a 3D nose here. Um, gonna look a little bit more under here, add a little bit more value there. with my finger and I can even go back in here and erase a little bit more out to make sure I have that pop on my nose on my ball of my nose and my bridge one more thing before I call it finished add a little bit more push to those and then You want to make sure you get those level fives in there if you haven't yet. Get a second angle with my finger. All right, so there we go. We have a nose with form, and you don't have hard lines going up the face, nice and soft, lots of value. Can't wait to see you guys try it out. Tag us with KCS at home.